going on Machine Masters family? This is MG The Future, bringing you guys another exclusive Machine Masters tutorial. Today I want to kind of do a video in regards to Jay Dilla Day. By the time you guys get this video, it would be over already, but I figure it would be pretty cool to revisit some of the techniques that I've been working on since the last time I've done a video about Jay Dilla. Um, that time I was in um, Ableton Live exclusively, however this time since the advent of Link Mode and a few other features I've uncovered. I figured I'd go about this different and kind of tackle two birds with one stone. I also got a user request asking me to show you guys how to do um, Machine as a plugin, but not necessarily a plugin, but how to bring it into Ableton or your DAW of choice um, while it's in plugin mode. My answer to that to start off is that you don't just use link mode and I'm gonna show you guys how that works in a second here. But anyway, let's get to it and I'll show you guys what I got so far and then I'll work on the rest of the track to kind of round this out. <clears throat> so first things first, Dilla is a man of samples. He's definitely no stranger to it. guitar samples. So the first thing I did was I reached into Soul Circuit 2 and I found a pretty dope guitar loop that I wanted to chop up. All right, so that's pretty smooth and I'm just going to chop it up a little bit pretty fast um, which I have a pattern here ready to go and then on the second part I have a drum break because you know a lot of that old-school hip-hop is all break based but I brought to you guys no other than the Marv breaks which are pretty dope I reached into the vinyl pack to grab it and it sounds like this So it already has that nice syncopated, syncopated um, kind of groovy, funky vibe to it. And it has all the elements as a kick, a snare, a hi-hat, kind of tambourine type of layer feeling to it. So I figured that'd be perfect to chop up. Two things that I want to pay close attention to before I get too far ahead, though, is once I picked these samples, I went ahead and treated them. So I figured Dill was using the SP during back in his heyday. So I got the SP emulation for the guitar. And of course, there's always an MPC in the studio, so I put the MP60 on the drums, because um, I'm assuming that's how these two things would be working together. And also to kind of exaggerate those features of each of those engines, you'd want to adjust your tuning on the pitch and envelope. Um, and I just did negative two. Um, it was originally 77 beats per minute, so when you tune it down, it's actually slower. But because the notes of the guitar are so far apart, I was able to get away with a faster tempo. And as I play it, you'll see what I mean. So that's what I got. And you can hear that kind of crispy, crunchy high end on those particular, on that drum kit and that guitar. And that's what I was going for. So now that I got this, there's a, probably a few more things you would want to add to it. Of course, you want to spread it out for arrangement. My favorite program of choice to do that in, of course, is Ableton Live. Um, you also might want to add a bass line for sure. And then you might want to gate that bass line in J Dilla fashion. So I'm going to pull up Ableton Live. You don't necessarily have to use it this way, but it's the best way for me to guys to show you how this works. So you notice I got link turned on here already. It's a little button you click and it starts staying in time with the program you're linking it to, in my case, Ableton Live. Ableton Live is in link and they're constantly searching for each other in terms of timing. So when I hit play on the jam, and then if I hit play in Ableton, you're gonna notice it's gonna count and then jump in. So any element I add into my timeline in Ableton, is always gonna to try to find the first downbeat to kind of kick in on. Which is pretty cool. So it keeps everything in time. So if you have a cool groove in here, a machine, or if you're collaborating with someone who sent you a machine file, this is a beautiful way to start building onto it. But in terms of answering the question of getting your elements from one program into the other and why you'd wanna do that, let's get to that first. So the cool thing about machine, it doesn't give you a lot of hassle in terms of jumping audio files or MIDI files out. If you turn your attention to where my mouse region is, you're gonna see this MIDI icon, looks like three notes or three steps, and this waveform. 
As you guess it, depending on what track you're on, it's going to export the MIDI data, which is here, into your DAW of choice. Or if you do wave, it's going to try to guess it and um, export that wave or loop region so you can drag it into your DAW of choice. In this case, I want to drag wave on my guitar loop. I'll put it on my Ableton timeline. And it's probably going to be out of time. And I'll go over that in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and mute this one. Play machine. And then hit play on Ableton. And we're going to see it try to catch me. So it imported this in, but Ableton didn't catch the data correctly. So my project's 84, but it guessed it at 112. I've showed this to you guys in previous videos, but basically you want to change the end marker so that it finishes up evenly. Or in this case, so that it's back to 84. Let's try it out. All right, so that's pretty simple. I just dragged the last transient marker, this highlighter yellow or highlighter green color, and I drug it back so that my tempo or my um, segment BPM will be 84. What I'm gonna do is, since I know this is a perfect loop region, I'm gonna select that loop region, I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna choose Consolidate. And there we have it. So when I play this and then play the machine together, it should be in time with each other. Thing that's kind of getting in my way with this probably because I only have one controller split between the two is that when you hit stop on one it doesn't stop both maybe there's another function to kind of help with that but as far as what it lets you do as far as flexibility I won't be complaining too much about that so now I got my guitar in here I'm um, always rename your tracks if you can afford to remember to do so as you go so they're much easier to work with so it says soul circuit Cool. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the drums, kind of speed through this a little bit. It did the same thing. It's guessing 112. We want to drag this last warp marker back to, it says 84. I want to do the same thing. I want to go ahead and right click and consolidate it so it's its own even file and it embeds the BPM tempo into the WAV file. I'm going to go ahead and save this as break. Cool, so now I'm in Ableton Live. I can go ahead and turn Link off, which is at the top left of Ableton Live. I could turn link off here within machine as well. And what's cool about this is unlike a plugin where it's too small on the screen or having two programs open separately, you can always turn link back on if you want to add a different change up or variation. So I'm going to go ahead and save this project. And I'm good to go. Now I'm 100% Ableton Live from this point forward, and I'm going to see if I can show you guys some more techniques. So first things first, I want to work on my break, so I'm going to solo that and play this break. So the cool original groove of those hi-hats is kind of throwing it off a little bit in terms of groove, but I'm programming it pretty straight. But let's say I want to add more groove to that. Well, there's no better way to do that than to get it from an actual drummer. So I'm going to go back into the Marvelous Breaks. I'm going to grab that, add it to the track first, then add it into my pool so I can get the groove from it. That's going to create it in Ableton Live's groove pool. I'm going to turn quantize up to about 70% or so. My timing, I'm going to turn down a little bit to 90. Velocity, I'm not going to touch. 
randomization I might turn up to 10 base 16 and then I'm going to go to my clip of my drum break that I programmed go into the groove pull section here and choose that break and then I'm just going to play it and just adjust the timing because it's not going to commit it until you hit the commit button So I went ahead and committed it. If you zoom in a little bit, you see that it moved things over just a slight bit because I'm using 50% of the groove. But I liked it. I like the way that feels. And now that I know that I like it, I'm going to do the same thing to the guitar chops and hopefully get everybody on the same accord. So what's happening is the downbeat of the drum kit is hitting in better timing with the downbeat of the guitar loop, which is perfect for this vibe and this style of tracks. Next thing I want to do is get a bass line real quick from it. So I'm going to go right click on the guitar loop audio track. I'm going to go to convert harmony to new MIDI track. That's going to create a piano instrument from us and Ableton Live is going to take its best guess at getting the MIDI notes. <clears throat> In this case is looking good. I always like to fold the track to only focus on the data or the scale at hand. So even with my sample pitched and machine at an even step, we can see that it gets the notes pretty good because Ableton and Melodyne and all other programs, Newtone and Fruity Loops, and there's one even in Logic even, they do way better with single voice instruments. So if you have like guitar riffs or guitar samples or piano riffs or piano samples from old music without a lot of reverb and delay, it's nearly spot on. So there's a couple things I can do. I can keep this MIDI clip, or in this case, I can copy it and assign a different sound to it later. So I'll just drag that out the way of my loop. But on the main clip, I wanna get a bass line. So I'm just gonna take the bottom notes and I'm gonna delete everything else. Let's see. And I added the same quantize as the drum break or the Marv break, about 70% quantize, 50% timing. All I got to do now is switch to sound. So this is by default Harmony to MIDI, which is just a piano track. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to try to go into my plugins. I'm going to pull in contact. I'm going to pull up the King, which is available in the Machine Master Shop as well, along with the other kits that I'm using in this video. And I'm going to see if this works right off gate. So I like that. You'll notice I'm running contact <laughs> in demo mode. So this will probably cut out soon. So what I would normally do is resample this in Ableton Live as an audio file if I'm going to commit to it for the end of the track. Um, that's until I step up my game and get complete ultimate, which is right around the corner. I'm just waiting for something else to transpire before I commit to the current version. But anyway, <laughs> this is a pretty cool VST. As you notice, it has a lot of flair to it because it's um, playing loops in key. Um, so you'll notice that there's some more articulations 
if you hold keys like I am doing now. In this track, I don't really need that. I just need the bass notes or root notes. So I took out that extra key that was in that arrangement to kind of get that extra flair out the way of the sample. And then I adjusted that low pass filter. So it's just all sub harmonics. So from here, a few things I want to kind of do real quick as from the audio editing perspective. First, let's trigger these to duck. I'm going to use the compressor in Ableton Live. You can use any compressor you want that allows you to key or to um, pick a signal to sidechain with. And Ableton Live is great at that. So I'm going to use de as my template. I'm going to put this on the bass track. I'm going to change it from EQ type to sidechain type. I'm going to get my uh, input from my break or audio channel. Um, if I wanted to break this down more, be more accurate, I just used the kick. I would chop the kick out or um, bust out the kick by itself from that arrangement. But for this demonstration, it's fine. I'm going to use the entire break. So the snare and the other elements are going to trigger it as well. I'm going to turn the ratio to 2 to 1. I'm going to do a fairly quick attack. I'm going to check this meter out as I do it. So what you're listening for is for that bass line to duck as I bring down this threshold. I don't want it dramatic because I have all the elements kicking it. Just a little bit. And what I did there was I took the same exact setting by holding the alt key on Mac and dragged it to guitar so it does the same exact thing to the guitar sample. So now all I gotta do now is adjust the threshold. So that's sounding pretty good. It has a dope, chill back vibe on it. But let's bring some more of this to life. So on my guitar, I got everybody ducking. On the break, I might want to embellish that a little bit. Let's see what plugins we can go into. Uh, the UADs. UADs good faithful. They never go wrong. So voice of God for bass. So let's try that before the demo runs out. <laughs> Basically, it's kind of like our bass and max bass. It just adds lower frequency harmonics to the bass to turn it from that uh, guitar bass that they used to create it to more of a sampled vinyl subby type bass. All right, then we go further down the list. So I'm going to show you guys one more trick, which I've done on a previous video, but it was brought to my attention in terms of using it with hip hop. Real simple. It's a pull tech EQ. You get it from Waves. You can get it from T Rex. You can get it from UED. You can get it from Plugin Alliance. You can get it from all the other software companies copying this thing because it's awesome. So I'm going to do something real quick. I'm going to change the low frequency to 20, which is sub bass. I'm going to attenuate it and boost it about the same number, so five. And what that's going to do is bring the lows out of the track, especially in a hip hop track. That's exactly what you want. So that's with it, that's without it, back on, all 
You're gonna hear it right there. It sounds like the bottom drops out if I turn it off. So check it. The kick gets real weak, but I like it. So now from here, we got that. So we got the bass highlighted. We got the low frequency information separated from the pull tech trick. And the only thing really left is to add some level to this bad boy and I'm good to go. And the reason why I'm not gonna do too much to it is because the guitar itself was mixed as part of the sample pack, unlike what you would normally see um, when you're sampling from a record. But I could add some EQ to it. I mean, I can tuck off some of these bottom frequencies just to get it out the rumble out the way. And since I'm using that crispiness from the SP and MPC uh, emulation of the machine, I can dip down these highs a little bit. And now all I'm gonna do is give it some volume. Just watch your monitoring as I do this. me mg the future just wanted to show you guys some cool techniques and in integrating the new link feature between machine and ableton live how to get your pattern ideas from machine into your daw via the drag audio clip feature showing you how to use the groove pull to give you some rhythm um, into all of your elements so they're more cohesive adding that side chain so we can duck the frequencies using the kick or the drum track and then adding a few hip-hop secrets as far as mixing plugins go especially that slate especially the uad and putting it all together to get you a pretty cool rough mix of a dope hip-hop track just that vibe just that style just that character um only other step i would probably do different is probably process my samples or everything with some external gear um, which is what i'm leaning towards in the future but hopefully you guys enjoyed this learned something from watching that workflow and definitely like the video, leave me a comment if you have any questions, subscribe to the Machine Master channel if you haven't already, and if you have any ideas for future videos, definitely let me know and I'll definitely look into it. Until next time, I'm MG the Future, this is the Machine Masters.